Hey, what's up? It's your boy Serrano. So I wanted to actually talk about my experience of using the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3 and then switching my 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 SIM to as my main phone to the Pixel Fold, um, which is a nice device as well. And so it's when I what I kind of noticed between both of these devices is that they're both going to be really, really beautiful, really nice devices, but they're going to basically be for two different audiences and we're going to get into the reasons why i think that um so make sure you guys stay locked into the end of the video because i want to talk about the overall battery life i've been getting on my google pixel fold and comparing it to the battery life i've been getting on my samsung galaxy fold 3 because i've been using both of my sim cards in here i have my t-mobile sim inside of the pixel fold right now and then i have my straight talk sim inside of the samsung galaxy fold right now and so you can see that they both are going to offer a different feel in the hand this is more like a, a uh, this is more like a blackberry passport feel in the hand it's got a square design it fits very um, snug in the hand it, it's almost perfect for the height when it comes to this is a different form factor than a lot of phones on the market you won't see this form factor on pretty much any phone in modern days right now because of how small the the display is now it doesn't feel tiny but it doesn't feel too big either and when it comes to this display is actually it's actually very um narrow a lot of people have you know had some complaints about it but there, i don't have anything to complain about when it comes to this outer display on the samsung galaxy z fold 3 now, I know a lot of people want it to be the pixel size, but that's, I don't think that's just gonna, I don't think Samsung's gonna let go of this design because it's not a bad design. It's actually a good design. They're just two completely different phones. So I wanna actually share my experience of using both of these devices and letting you know what I think after, you know, you know almost 48 hours with the pixel fold with and switching my sim and i actually couldn't actually um stop using this so i always carry two phones on me at a single time i also carry a third phone on me which is like a, a budget device so i have my um yuma digi g3 max which i still think is a solid budget device and so if you're looking for the latest uh, technology the latest features the latest innovation then this is basically the newest um you know smartphone for that but when it comes to the best of the bunch when it comes to all the features under the the sun and uh, a whole lot more you're going to be looking at the z fold 3 so they can't replace either of, of they can't replace each other if you're using the fold 3 right now and you switch to the the fold from to the pit from from the z fold to the fold it's not going to replace the Z Fold 3 because you're going to be losing some features that you would have gotten on here. But then if you use this device and you never had a Fold before and you're just using it as a, a brand new device, you never had a Fold, this is your first Fold. This will be a great experience because you won't know really what you're missing out on when you're using this device. And what you're missing out on when you're using this device is extremely fast charging. This thing has a really good charging speed and let me just get my fast charger right now and when i know when i plug this guy in right here it's going to offer a very fast charge when it comes to this thing so you're you're going to get some faster charging speeds also a nice narrow feel in the hand for one-handed use and this one also has a uh, wider aspect ratio and you can also use it for one-handed use, but this one is a little bit better for one-handed use. This one is a little bit better for not being able to open it in one-handed use because the screen is wider, but you can still open it up and it's optimized as a huge smartphone. This one is optimized as a tablet when you open it up. It's all the apps are gonna be recognized as tablet apps and opt optimized as tablet apps whereas this one doesn't really have that optimization for the tablet at all it's basically a very large smartphone when you open it up so let's see what's under the hood on both of these 
and make sure you guys stay locked to the end of the video if you're still here just type down below i'm still here so i know you're still kicking it with me and i just want to remind you to hit the like button so we can get this video out to more people okay so i definitely think that these two smartphones are for two different audiences especially because the samsung has deck support for optimization for when you want to use it as a tablet you also do get the pen support so you can take notes on the samsung galaxy fold and that's something that honestly i i am not willing to give up at this point i need the s pen a lot of people every now and then they'll use the s pen on here or they might not even own the s pen they probably never even purchased the s pen for this so they don't really use the full um you know capabilities of what this will offer but when it comes to using this um s pen for the fold it's a game changer. It's, 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 it's extremely crazy what this S Pen can do on, on, um, as far as on a business level. Signing documents, PDFs, being able to take notes, opening it up and using it just like a notepad is basically the Samsung Galaxy Note, um, but with a, with, with a huge display on here. And so it's going to give you um, the ability to uh, not only draw, write, get work done, but it's going to it's going to be something that I'm not willing to give up. Like, obviously, it doesn't fit in the phone, but I do have a case right here that has, you know, uh, everything that I need to fit the, the, the S Pen. And basically it locks into place on this hinge so it gets stored away when I put it on the device right here. So. We actually get a nice matte back finish on the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold. And we get that same nice matte back finish on the Google Pixel Fold. Both have a really nice feel in the hand. They, the When it comes to the grip of the Z Fold in the hand, it feels very sturdy, very narrow. When it comes to the grip on the Pixel Fold, it feels the same way. It's just not as slim. And so a lot of people say they can't type on the CZ Fold, I'm not sure what they're talking about because uh, let's see the you might do some mistypes because the buttons are so small, but um, it's great for swipe swipe typing like this Samsung Galaxy uh, Z Fold 3. I don't think there's a better device when it comes to the swipe typing like you it just open it. it it has a narrow feel so you don't have to reach around if you do have to get to the top it's not hard to do you just put your pinky at the bottom for the most part when you're holding it like this and then when you want to get to the top you drop your pinky and then you go to the top you know there's not it's not rocket science so it definitely has a nice feel in the hand for one-handed use the hinge will be closed on the five if you're looking to update your z fold three to the five this one has that fingerprint sensor on the side. This one has that fingerprint sensor on the side. The buttons are gonna be placed in different places right here. Call quality on both of these things is phenomenal. The speakers sound great on both of these devices. They both won't offer expansion of the storage, but let's, let's look into the software real quick. Now you get facial recognition on both of these and I haven't had any issue with the facial recognition or the fingerprint sensors on both of these. So it's a really good experience in, 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 in that sense. Let's go to settings. I want to show you my battery life because with battery life, it's, it's, I have been getting a little bit better battery life on the Samsung and you can optimize the, you know, the, 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 the Samsung when it comes to the software, there's a lot more software built inside of the Samsung compared to Google at this point. They've just basically made this thing, um, a beast it's it's a straight up beast when it comes to the features so i got three hours and 24 minutes of screen on time i've been using it since like 6 30 a.m this morning almost 24 hours of use right here you can see on the samsung when i look at my usage on the pixel you can see i haven't charged either one all day long and when it comes to my screen on time i got four hours and 11 minutes but i am at 19 18 percent on the pixel and I'm at 28% on the fold. Now, obviously this, the, this, the, the fold th um, from the pixel, 
will give you uh, some options here for adaptive battery, which I have turned on. So it's still learning my battery behaviors. It's, it's only been two days. So that's not enough time for it to learn what what my what my daily life is. It's got to be at least two weeks, three weeks, maybe even longer before it can know that. But um, the feel in the hand on the Z Fold 3 feels great because it sinks into your palm right here. It also does that on the fold from Google. And um, like if you're if you're if you're browsing through apps on both of these, one of the things you're going to notice is that let's say I open an app. Let's let's open up Spotify right now or now nah, let's let's do a social media app because I want to I want to um, show you something um, real quick. So one of the things that I'm trying to explain right now is that the Z Fold 3 is optimized as a phone on the outside and as a tablet on the inside, whereas the Pixel Fold is only optimized as a smartphone the entire time. So the the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3 is a is a smartphone right now. When you open it up, it's optimized as a tablet. Now, with the Z Fold, I'm sorry, with the with the Fold from Google, when you open it up, it's the same exact phone as it was when it's closed. There's nothing that's going to change. The apps are going to stay the same. The wallpaper is going to stay the same. The icons are going to stay the same. Nothing's going to change. The wallpaper is the same on the inside and the outside. And you can see it does have a when you open it, it doesn't completely flush out flat, but you can bend it more. And now it's actually completely flat. So that's you just got to put an extra press on there and then it's going to optimize completely flat. So if I open up, let's say, for example, um, you um, Facebook and now I close the device, it's going to change what I'm looking at because it's two different. Um, one is a tablet on the inside. And on the outside, it's a phone, so it's not going to um, always change to the what I'm looking at, especially on social media. But they do have something in here um, inside of labs. Uh, let me see. Samsung, you go to labs right here and you can actually optimize it so that when you open it up, you get some cool features. And it says right here when your phone is folded. It'll appear at the top of the screen and appear um, extra controls and stuff like that. You so you get flex mode, you get multi windows for all apps, you get full screen for all apps, you get the pop up window. Um, and these are some really cool features. So they have something in here where you can actually customize the um, experience so that when you open it up, the apps, whatever you're looking at on the inside will be on the outside, but a lot of the times on Facebook, when I open it up, it changes it. But on the Google Pixel, let's say I go into Facebook with it closed and then I open it up, it always is the same. So I kind of I kind of like that. Like, let's say I'm looking at this. Uh, let me see this video right here. No, let, let's see. Let's say I, I'm looking at this car and then I open it up. It's going to be that same thing because it's just a continuation of what's on the inside and the outside. So it's going to stay the same. It's going to be the when you open it, it's going to it's not going to change. So that's going to stay the same. And on the on the fold from Samsung, when I open it up, it, it changes 90 percent of the time. So like right there, I open it is different when I close it is different. So it never. It, it doesn't know that um, it's, it's one step. It's one device with the inner and the outer display, um, unless you're using like YouTube or, you know, um, tw uh, even Twitter will change. Sometimes the only thing that really doesn't change is like apps that, you know, like Spotify won't change um, banking apps, stuff like that. So. This device right here is optimized as a tablet on the inside, which I really do like because it's going to give you a completely different experience from the outside to the inside, whereas the Google Pixel Fold will give you that same experience on the outside and inside. So it's just going to be a bigger display and you could switch the aspect ratio and now you can use it as two separate. You could use it in this way, but the borders are going to always be on that on that display like. Like right here, when I'm using my 
my my Samsung Galaxy's um, fold right here, it's gonna be a full screen and it doesn't give me the same borders. So let's turn it this way so I can show you really what I'm talking about. You can see the borders are different, a lot different. That's because the Samsung is actually optimized as a tablet when it's open. So you can see it's giving me that option to move it across. It disappeared, but the Google Pixel doesn't even have that yet. You would have to change it this way and you still don't get the full display. This way on the fold, you get the full display. So more optimization with the fold, better battery life with the fold uh, from Samsung. Now with the fold from Google, I think you do get better cameras on there. Uh, I still have to do a camera test um, on, on here and, and kind of test out the cameras. But just from what I saw, the cameras go up to 20 times zoom. They offer really good um, cameras on this device. Uh, it just they just are impressive on, on the Google devices all the time. Like you, you could change it right here. It's at 4K 60. So as long as you're not using it in the sun, it's not going to get hot. And if you're using it for 4K for extended periods of time, it will get hot. When I first got it, it was hot. But now that I've been using it, it's kind of, I've, I, I did the software updates and now it just feels like cool almost all the time, especially when I have a case on it. In tent mode, there is a slight advantage to the Samsung. Like obviously the Pixel is going to be a lot more um, had that bigger display so it's going to look better when it comes to the looking at the windows but um you get flex mode on the, the samsung so when you flex it a lot of the apps will give you flex support like right here i have to hit that button and um you get the flex mode support right there you could turn that on for all your apps and so now if i open up ig right here and i flex it it's going to give me that ability to um, use this as a mouse on here, which is kind of cool because then I could scroll like that. But they don't have that support on the Z, on the Samsung on the um, Google yet. So it's pretty much um, still developing. It's still going to get um, a good experience. It's just not going to be developed as much as the Samsung at this point. But um, after I've been using both of these devices for about 40, um, I've been using this one for 48 hours and I've been using this for about seven months. And I really like this, the Sam, the, I really like the fold from Google. They did a really good job so far. The hinge is closed. It has a really good design. Um, it's fast. It feels good in the hand. It has um, good, bat has good, decent battery life for the amount of time I've been using it. So I really haven't run into any issues when, when it comes to battery so far. I've been getting, I got a full day, bo both days I've had it when I've been since I've been using it. So no issues so far in that department when it comes to the battery. It could be a little bit better, but I think that the Samsung has faster charging and a better battery right now, but that could change over time. Um, and one can't really replace the other because the the features like right here at the top you're getting features that aren't even found on the google yet they both offer the wallet which i really do use every day but there's just more features on the samsung like secure folder uh, enhanced processing they both this one has dolby atmos it has music share multi-control just just a lot of stuff baked inside of it samsung galaxy dex which allows you to use it on um you know a, a monitor and make it into like a, a support for like an external um, display giving it a lot more functionality and with the s pen that's going to be crazy and so you you can't really replace the z fold with the with the with the google pixel fold but you will get a really good experience so i, I still use both of these devices right now with my sim cards in them and I just wanted to give you an idea of how it feels to sw um, switch, but I still been using them both. So I can't say I completely switch because I can't let go of the Z Fold 3 just because of all the features that it has to offer. But honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed with what Google did. I like the display. I like the size of it. I like the feel in the hand. It's definitely different. 
It has facial recognition. It has fingerprint recognition. When you open it up, you still get um, the fingerprint on the on the side and everything. It looks really beautiful, but the apps stay the same from the inner and the outer display versus on the Samsung is it's, it's, it's two different devices. One's a tablet, one's a smartphone on the outside. But let me know what you guys think about both of these things in the comment section. Would you upgrade your Z Fold 3 to the Fold from Google? and Or are you looking forward to getting the Z Fold 5 instead and upgrade into that? Um, I'm going to test out the Google Pixel in a lot more detail. So make sure you stay locked in for more Google Pixel videos. But I just wanted to give you my experience after using it for 48 hours. Um, I definitely like the cameras on here. 20 times zoom, 4K 60 on here when it comes to video which looks really crispy and you get that 20 times zoom and um it has that the cameras are great it has that mode where you can use the screen on the back to get your pictures just like you can do on the on the on the samsung so you can use the rear camera to get really good pictures i like how they implemented that because you know samsung started that they actually give you the cover display um viewfinder i think i touched something on here hold on oh i entered that multitasking mode the other thing i wanted to throw out there was let me just show you that mode real quick before i go to the next idea or the next topic but yeah you get that cover screen camera for both of these so you can actually use the rear camera as a selfie camera so that's definitely cool but the last thing that I wanted to basically explain is that the um, multitasking on the Samsung is still superior. And that, that's because they offer um, support for three apps and float in windows. And, and Google doesn't have float in windows yet. Maybe they will get float in windows at some point, but I still think they're a little bit behind to not have float in windows. So for example, if I open um, the Play Store on here and I open the Play Store on here and I wanted to get into my my uh, multitasking, you can drag up right here. You can this one already has the dock, but then I have this on the side of the the Samsung. So I could drag this over to the bottom and then for here, I just have to swipe up and I could drag this to the side. I can't drag it to the bottom. I only get I, ha I would have to twist it like this. Let me show you. And then it changes to the top and bottom. So I have to switch it. It just doesn't get, I, I can't, you know what I'm talking about? Like I can't make this go to the top and bottom in this way. I have to actually switch it like this. And now I can get top and bottom. And then the other thing is that on the Samsung, I could put a float in window over top of here. So for example, if I put touch this and I put that, I drop that there, I can still get floating apps and I can minimize this, maximize this. I also get pen support so it's easier to manipulate. But then the other thing that I can do is I can put this down here and now I have three apps running on the wind right here. One, two, three, which is like that's clutch. That's really clutch. And then when I turn it this way, I get that different aspect ratio. So with the Google Pixel Fold, it's just two windows, no floating windows. Um, you know, it does look really good with the animations right here, but I can't get floating windows on here yet, just split screen. So like I said, um, they still are tweaking this thing they're actually optimizing it they're making it better but it's not the same experience that you would get on the samsung galaxy z fold 3 so let me know would you upgrade to the fold from google or are you getting the fold 5 or if you have the 4 right now are you getting the 5 from samsung or are you switching to the google fold let me know what you guys think i'm gonna get back with you but if you're still here just type down below i'm still here so i know you're still kicking it with me and I just want to remind you to hit the like button so we can get this video out to more people. And I'll get right back with you later, crew. Peace.